In today's episode, you will learn how to control an LED using Raspberry Pi. The components that we will be needing for this tutorial are number one, Raspberry Pi. The one I'll be using is Raspberry Pi 3B+. You can also use any other version of Raspberry Pi. Number two, 5 volt 2 amps adopter. Or you can also use a power bank. Number three, an LED. The longer leg is the anode and the shorter leg is the cathode. Number four, a 330 ohm resistor. And finally, number five is some male to female type jumper wires. These components can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. Let's get started. This schematic is designed in Ketsoft Eagle 9.1.0 version. If you want to learn how to make schematics and PCBs, then watch my tutorial. The link is given in the description. This is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B header. These are the physical board numbers. The physical board numbers can be different. As you can see, GPIO8 has a physical number of 3. And similarly, GPIO6 has a physical number of 22. As you can see, a 330 ohm resistor is connected in series with the inner side of the LED, while the other end of the resistor is connected with pin number 11 of the Raspberry Pi, while the cathode side of the LED is connected with any ground pin of the Raspberry Pi. In Raspberry Pi 3, the ground pins are 6, 9, 20, 25, 30, 34 and 39. In my case, I will connect this with pin number 6. The connections are as per the circuit diagram is explained. A 330 ohm resistor is connected with the inner side of the LED. This is a current limiting resistor. The other end of the resistor is connected with pin number 11 of the Raspberry Pi while the cathode side of the LED is connected with the ground which is pin number 6. So that's it. Now let's power up our Raspberry Pi. Now we are ready for the programming. As you can see, no keyboard and mouse is connected and it has no physical connection with the laptop or an LCD. Because as I explained in my previous tutorials, we will be using the SSH network using the PuTTY software to write and execute programs. So I recommend you should watch my previous tutorials. The links are given in the description, which completely explains how to set up your SSH network using Wi-Fi. Open the PuTTY software. Enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. and click open. Enter Pi as your login name and Raspberry as your password and click enter. As you can see we are logged in. Use clear command to clear the screen. Use the ls command to list all the files and folders. In my last tutorial I created this YouTube folder Let's open this folder by typing cd youtube and press enter and use the ls command to check what's inside this folder. Currently we have two files in this folder. Now let's make another file with the name ld1.py and click enter. This will open an editor where we can write our program. Import rpi.gpio is gpio in order to use rpi.gpio throughout the rest of your python script you need to put this statement at the top of your file this statement includes the rpi.gpio module and goes a step further by providing a local name gpio which we will call to reference the module from here on. After you have included the rpi.gpio module, the next step is to determine which of the two pin numbering schemes you want to use. To specify in your code which numbering system is being used, 
use the gpio.sit mode function. The gpio.board may be easier if you are wiring directly to the header. I will be using gpio.board numbering scheme in all my future videos on Raspberry Pi. gpio.sit mode, gpio.board. Both the import and sit mode lines of code are required if you want to use Python. Next step is setting up in mode. If you have used Arduino, you are probably familiar with the fact that you have to declare a pin mode before you can use it as an input or as an output. As the LD is connected with pin number 11 of the Raspberry Pi to set the pin mode, we simply write gpio.setup 11, gpio.out. If you are using a sensor, then out is replaced with N. Now let's use the try and finally for exceptions or errors. GPIO.cleanup simply clean up all the ports we have used. Now let's make an infinite OI loop. To write a pin high or low, use the gpio.output function. This function takes two arguments as the input, the pin number and true or false. True means high and false means low. gpio.output 11, true is early is connected with pin number 11. Press Ctrl O to save this program and then press Ctrl X to exit the editor. If you write the ls command you can see now we have three files. Let's run led1.py. Write python led1.py and press enter. As you can see the ld is turned on and it will remain on. Now let's turn off this LED. Press Ctrl Z on the keyboard to stop. And now open the file again. Simply replace the true with false. Save the file and press Ctrl X2. Exit the editor. You can use your laptop arrow keys to switch between commands. Select a command. Let's python led1.py and press enter. You can see the LD is turned off. Press Ctrl Z to stop the program. Now again open the file. Replace a false with true. Save the file. Exit the editor. Run the file and you can see the LD is turned on. Now let's change this code to automatically turn on and turn off this LED. Press Ctrl Z to stop the program and again open the file. Write import time. Let's add a delay of one second. For this we use time.sleep function. Number inside the parentheses represents seconds. Now write instruction to turn off the LED and again use a delay of one second. Save the file and press Ctrl X to exit the editor. Now again run the LED1.py program. You can see the LD is blinking. In my upcoming tutorial, I will show you how to control this LED using a push button. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.